Welcome to the Live Full Work Fun Podcast. This is the show to encourage you to live your life to the fullest and do fun work that fuels your lifestyle. Hi, I'm your host, Gayla Scrivener. Every week, you'll be introduced to amazing guests, useful resources, and inspirational stories. You'll discover opportunities and perspectives to shape your version of living full and working fun. Well, hello there. Welcome to the show. If this is your first time here, I am so delighted to have you joining for the very first time. Thanks for checking out the show, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you're returning, welcome back. It is always so great to have you here with me. Are you a part of the Live Full Work Fun community yet? If not, be sure to hop over to Facebook and join the Live Full Work Fun Facebook group. The link is right down in the show notes. You know, hang with me until the end of the show. What I'd like for you to do, if you're already in the community, great. If you're not, join. But either way, come on over and I'd love to hear your biggest takeaway from today's episode. So what's this episode all about? Well, have you ever felt like you're spread like way, way too thin. You know, you leave a job hoping for more freedom, but then you find yourself so frustrated because you're wearing so many hats. Based on years of frontline experience, today's guest, Jim Adams, believes you can surround yourself with the right people and spend more time doing what you love most. Well, I can relate. I have one of the best teams, no, not one of the best teams, the best team ever that makes so much possible. And we work together in tandem to solve problems for our clients, solve problems within our business. And the team makes work fun. Jim has helped literally hundreds of small and family-owned businesses around the U.S. and Canada better understand themselves and what they need to do next. Before running his own super successful business, Jim was a top consultant with an international business consulting firm. AmericanLandscapeStructures.com, the multi-seven-figure pavilion sales business he founded in 2013, has doubled. Yes, doubled during the pandemic years. Nowadays, you'll find him cruising around the country with his wife, Kara, in their RV, their headquarters on wheels, he likes to call it. When he's not meeting with clients or working on his team of superstars, he's hanging with his sweetie or dropping into the local CrossFit box for a high-intensity workout. Well, let's see how Jim has found his groove in living full and working fun. Well, hey, Jim, I am so glad that you're back. You were on episode 137, and I can't even remember what date that is, but it was episode 137 because I looked up that part. We talked uh, originally about the importance of knowing your numbers as a business owner, because that's that's where you know a lot about that. And Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring you back on the show and catch up with you again, because we haven't seen each other for quite some time. It was like last summer, I think. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we saw each other in Nashville. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today I thought, let's take a deeper dive, bring you back on the show and take a deeper dive in why you do what you do. I wanted to start with this question. What's your vision of living full and what makes your work fun? Yeah. So getting started, I've like for the longest time, I can remember wanting to have my own business. And so one of the things that business owners want is they want to have more freedom. And so oftentimes early in the days of the business, you have less freedom, right? You're just like grinding away. And so I progressed through that to where um, my wife, Karen, and I are able to uh, enjoy life much more, you know, like you, you know, we have a, an RV that we travel with. And so we actually, you know, set that up 
just a couple hours away so we could go there on weekends. And then we actually went on a really long trip uh, this uh, past summer through 11 states. You know, we drove it up and, and uh, you know, got as far north as, uh, as Rhode Island. And just uh, we were able to be away from the business uh, for about a month. So that was really, really fun. And then also where we saw you right behind that, uh, where we saw you, you know, right, right behind that month trip, we were out of town traveling for another week. Just having that freedom to, uh, to not just be tied down to your job or your business all the time. It's just really, really awesome. Since we're fellow RVers, mm -hmm. do you use your RV as an office on wheels or like, do you use it like mainly for vacation? Yeah. So when we first got the RV, we got this particular RV specifically because it had an office in it at that time. Really? Because I was, yeah, I was so like, we searched the internet and looked high and low to find this Redwood model fifth wheel that had a, a nice office setup in it. You know, other people use uh, toy haulers. Uh, if you know anything about mm -hmm. that's what people like haul their Harleys or their golf carts in the back. You can use that for an office. Uh, but anyway, we were looking for, my wife didn't like that idea. She wanted to have something that looked nice, but, uh, but anyway, so back then I was spending a lot of time in that office. Um, you know, wasn't so much uh, these last couple trips because uh, having more of a team in place that uh, can make decisions and get things done when we're away, it's not just me grinding away in the business every day. I've got some other folks that can mind the store and take care of things while I'm gone. So you wanted freedom that entrepreneurship uh, award you. You weren't always an entrepreneur. Did you work for a company prior to self-employed? Yeah. So after getting out of the army, I did sales for 10 plus years. And then I did management consulting full-time as an employee. Yes. And especially that time when I got to work with all these other businesses and really working with business owners and helping business owners, I knew that's what I really wanted to do. So um, no, I definitely was not always a business owner. I was an employee for many years. And uh, like many entrepreneurs, uh, I was not a particularly a particularly good employee. I, I did not like, really did not like being an employee. I really, and even actually, even when I was an employee, um, the positions that I had that I was drawn towards, there was a lot of freedom. I never, like never, ever, ever worked in an office. Like I was always out and about in the field. Ah, uh, yes. So what was the tipping point? You own a uh, pavilion business. So what was the tipping point? What, what was it in 2014 that made you just leave corporate life and go out on your own? The main most obvious thing was the, uh, the full-time travel that I was doing. It was just not sustainable. So that when I had an opportunity to get into this business, my wife and I were looking for a structure for our backyard. And, you know, we started looking around online and found out about these things uh, called perlas you know, we realized that, you know, that's what we needed for our space. And we found out there are these, uh, you know, Amish folks up in Pennsylvania that made these uh, in a kit form. And so back then we purchased a kit. We had somebody, you know, here local where we are in uh, the Charleston, South Carolina area had uh, put it up for us. And so that was our exposure to that. So one thing led to another. We talked to the manufacturer. We had a background with uh, my wife's business where, you know, one, we knew a lot of the things, what to do and what not to do as far as trying to attract business. And then also I knew how to sell on the phone. So when you can multiple times a day, get people to give you their credit card number over the telephone, you know, like that's a specific thing that is very, very important to know um, how to do if you're going to have an online business. That is amazing. Did you ever think possible about, I mean, 2014 is quite some time ago for an online business. Did mm -hmm. you ever think it was possible to just be able to not be tied to geographically? Because you could do what you do anywhere. Yeah. So we used to have these these internet phones at my desk, but I've always had the um, the Ring Central app on my on my cell phone that I could use when I was out of town. My my bigger issue wasn't the yeah, so I could the the problem was is that when I started, like I was doing everything. So even though I could, it just didn't work very well to do it 
I don't know, there's just something about trying to work in a hotel room that just didn't work very well for me. And so, you know, working in the RV, <laughs> well, worked better. But ultimately, you know, one mistake I made early on for sure was uh, waiting too long to get help and not being more intentional about that. So I was doing, you know, most for all the work for way, way too long. It is, uh, it's just, it's just so much better now having a team. Yeah, let's jump ahead to to more current stuff. At first, you know, we we jump into entrepreneurship for freedom, but so many times we tie ourselves down by doing everything for too long before building mm-hmm. that team and and the the structures and the systems and and everything like that. Now, fast forward to today where last year you were able to take a month long away from the business vacation which was probably not possible a few years prior to that. And you have a team and you have the freedom to add to your your business a different revenue stream of consulting. Tell us a little bit about your consulting business. Yeah, absolutely. So back, you know, again, as an employee, I did full-time management consulting, worked with, um, you know, hundreds of businesses all around the country. Sometimes it was just for a couple of days, but most time it was for several weeks or even a few months. And so I just really, really enjoyed that kind of work. But again, as an employee, it was very tough working under someone else's rules and someone else's model. And then also, I mean, what, what I had to charge underneath of that model was in the range of, um, just for me, um, my fees and travel ten to fifteen thousand dollars a week, and so that was a really big burden on the client. I can still get the client a good chunk of the the same results that I'd be there eight hours a day, except with an arrangement where we do you know where we do a diagnostic, you know we do a deep dive into your business, and then you can decide from there you know what things that you just want to do on your own, what things that you want to work with me on. There might be a little bit there that. I would do for you where it makes sense, like maybe developing a a compensation plan or like that. But there's no reason why it needs to be $150,000 for me to be there eight to six, um, you know, Monday through Friday, flying back and forth. We can do it uh, over Zoom. And then also the big thing, you know, being able to offer that diagnostic, like that's just absolutely huge. There's just so much value in that alone. Um, Having a diagnostic and an action plan to get you pointed at the right things. I mean, even as an entrepreneur myself, you know, one of the things I find is that, you know, we're just trying out so many different things to try to move the needle, to try to get, improve our cash flow, to try to get more profit, to try to get more sales, to try to get more workout, you know, just working so hard and fast on so many things, just taking a couple of days to just slow down and take a look at what we're doing. That like, if we would just like, you know, focus on a couple of things, what a huge difference that that can make. It sure can. Now, did you find that 2020 helped you to find consulting clients or to follow up with consulting clients in a virtual setting versus face-to-face because of everything that happened in, in 2020? Are more people receptive to working online with you? Yeah. So to me, one of the really good things is it just cut down on the travel. It made people more open-minded to it. You know, I think before then there was kind of an expectation of, you know, we really need to get to know you and meet you face to face and and that kind of thing. And, you know, not that that's not really good, but it's just, um, I mean, even from the other direction, as far as me working with contractors and consultants, to me, I, and employees, I found it's just opened up a whole new world to be able to find talent nationally instead of either locally or having to, you know, fly people in to help me in my business. So it really has you as like, even like, I would not have known you if it hadn't been for, you know, my mindset and getting to the point of branching out nationally. Yeah. Even when me starting uh, freelancing right after I got out of corporate, you know, freelancing as a, as a virtual assistant, the, the folks that I was networking to, it was like the mindset, I've got to meet you face to face. We've always got to meet face to face. And 2020 like really helped with streamlining that whole process because it was like a collective mindset shift that it's, it's okay to have video calls or phone calls to get to know somebody. So I loved that. So in our last episode, you know, we talked a lot about knowing 
knowing your numbers and the importance of that, how do you help or who do you serve in your consulting business and how do you help them? Almost all the businesses that I've served over the years has been small and family owned businesses, less than 25 employees. A lot of it is construction and small manufacturing, but generally speaking, I'd say small, typically founder-led second generation businesses, less than 25 employees is where where my work has been focused. And then, like I said, one of the things that uh, I would always focus in on would be that uh, diagnostic phase in terms of really getting to know them and to determine if I was really a fit for them. Anyway, basically small and family owned uh, businesses is the heart of my business. I think that business has changed. I think relationships are even more important than they used to be. I don't know. What is, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I think definitely um, getting to know the other person, you know, one of the challenges is the, uh, you know, the amount of time that it takes to get to know the other other person. Like I know, um, you know, you start spending a little bit of time and you might ask the question, you know, is this, is this somebody that I want to work with long term? You know, you're the service provider. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely getting to know the customer uh, or the client, understanding their like cast of characters, who their people are. Who does what? There's um yeah, there's a lot to it, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the actual product or the solution is. Going into business for ourselves, and you work with those smaller businesses that are primarily in manufacturing and, and construction, maybe family mm-hmm. owned under 25 employees, which is a, a really cool path to go down because you're your own boss, right? But with your clients that are own these types of business, what do you see that their biggest challenge is? So first off, the biggest challenge is is the business owner themselves. You know, they have their reasons for going into business, but they have, uh, you know, they each have their own mindset. They have their own areas, you know, where they're strong and confident. And then they have their own, you know, everybody has their own uh, limiting beliefs. So sorting that out is always interesting. The other thing is that, I mean, any entrepreneur, there's a lot of skills to get a hold of to be one of the businesses that survive. Like you've seen the same statistics that I've seen that, you know, 80% of businesses don't make it past 10 years. And so to be one of those businesses that survives, you have to get on top of all the areas of business of sales, operations, finance, hiring, and marketing. Like you have to get on top of that. You can't do that all at one time. So let's say you're really, really good at sales, right? And, uh, you know, so that, that would be me. And so, but you're not very good at, uh, maybe you're not very good at management or, or measuring or, or numbers or things like that. Or maybe you don't have the best leadership skills, you know, whatever that next thing is, where do you, where do you need to start? Do you need to start with your marketing? Do you need to start with your production? Do you need to start with your um, your tracking, your administration with systems? You can't work on everything at one time in terms of two things. One, in terms of um, application, like actually making, making the changes. Um, but before that, in terms of learning, like as an entrepreneur, where do you even start to find out your next step? Where to start learning? And then where to start applying that's gonna move the needle the fastest? Being a business owner is hard, right? What has been your biggest reward in being an entrepreneur? What keeps you going through the hard parts? So right now, I would say that it will have to be the different people that work with me, that the lifestyle that American Landscape Structures affords them, not just financially. I've got one design consultant in Philadelphia that has a 10-year-old son. You know, he's, he's able to take his son to school and spend time with him, you know, doesn't have to work. 50 hours a week as an employee. And also he's an artist. He is a professional artist. Like he's at the point where he's got his pieces in museums um, in Philadelphia, you know, so that's like would be his dream. So he's able to work towards his dream as an artist. Like he took last July off and a week in December off to, to to work on his art and his art displays. I've got another, um, another dad in the Harrisburg area, a similar situation. So he was working for the railroad 60 hours a week and traveling all over the place. And so he was missing out on time with his 12 year old son. So he went to work with me. He goes to his baseball games. He's able to be there when, uh, Anyway, he's able to be there um, with his son to do homework with him. And then so for me, where, you know, my dad left me when I was five and he was not at any of my ball games or anything like that, that just, uh, just that lifestyle, just really, uh, that really means a lot to me. 
that uh, those people are able to to do that and that we're growing and that um you know we're now you know american landscape structures is now part of the uh you know the great resignation you know you don't have to go to an office or a store or retail place you don't have to go to work for an employer every day at an office and be away from your home and your family you can you can uh, work from home. Yeah, that is such a reward to hear how you're you know, you're bringing on folks into your company and awarding them freedom. You're extending out a more free lifestyle. Work has changed so much. Employees demand different things. Our priorities should be with our families, right? Things had kind of gotten it skewed over the last few years. And 2020 really put things into perspective. Now with uh, you being able to open up opportunities for your employees with your structures business. And then through consulting, are you finding business owners that you need to help advise them to open up to new ways of doing things to retain their employees? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I've been through this exact same journey myself. And so I can speak from experience, you know, two and a half years ago, I was doing everything myself and it just wasn't sustainable. Now, you know, I'm able to take off when I need to, but what's more is I've got clients, like I've got this one, um, one client, his name is Travis. He's the grandson of the founder that is taking over the business. So Travis has got um, three school age kids, one, I'm sorry, one newborn and two school age little girls. He's home at five o'clock every day. He's running a $5 million a year business and he's home at five o'clock every day. And also that business, you know, who's owned by his 74 year old grandfather. When I started working with them two and a half years ago, was basically paying the owner a salary and that was it. They were, they were breaking even. And today working with his, with the owner's grandson, they're now at, uh, at over uh, $500,000 a year profit. Wow. So for a 74 year old, the biz, the value of the business and that he has a succession plan now. And so the owner and his wife, like they don't have a thing to worry about with retirement, whereas, um, was two and a half years ago, they did not really have any uh, much means to have a very secure retirement. In fact, it had only been a couple of years before that, that they uh, they had to actually put money back into the business to fund losses. So now they have a, a very stable business that they are, you know, they're very secure today. Awesome. That must make you feel really good to see their transition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be able to apply what I've learned from so many other business owners and like American Landscape Structures has been like this uh, amazing laboratory that I've been able to, you know, tinker with these last, uh, will that be eight years? Yeah, it's just a... it's just amazing and be able to pass along to others, whether it's, um, you know, how to uh, deal with paid search and SEO and like, how much does it even make sense for your business to spend on digital marketing? Like I can help people sort that out. That was one of the things that I helped uh, uh, Travis and his grandfather with. Um, they were spending, um, I want to say $1,500 a month on on Google ads. And so we were able to put their numbers together because of what the grandson Travis and I were able to put together. We were able to put together a justification for a new website and to multiply that budget with the new website four times. And that's one of the reasons we created a whole new phone online sales channel that didn't exist before and that's the main reason why they've been able to uh, increase from uh, you know two million dollars in sales to five million is because of that online and phone channel, and that was just simply taking what I learned at American Landscape Structures, both selling on the phone and also generating leads, and just translating it right over there to a shed company, just a perfect fit. What's new for you this coming year? What are you excited about? Well, I'm super excited about having a, you know, this is a, my first full year having a project manager. So this time last year, I was managing um, all the projects. It was nuts and doing most of the sales, just absolutely nuts. So this year I have Joel. He's a, he's a superstar. He's on it. We used to do like 130 projects a year would be a big year. Now we're going to do more like 400. And so I'm very confident that Joel will be on it. We're hiring new uh, new design consultants. So I've got one person starting next week and then somebody else starting a couple of weeks later. So we're building out our team. And so, uh, and so I'm not doing really, um, I'm handling a stray uh, repeat sale here and there, but I'm not doing any of the sales 
anymore. Not that I didn't love doing that. It's just, you have to be there uh, at your desk grinding away to make those phone calls, to make those emails, to be there when the phone rings, when they answer back. That frees me up to do a couple of things. One is work more on the business, uh, getting the systems set up. One of the things is to get a management team in place. So one thing that a lot of people I found don't realize is that having a really top management team like costs a lot of money. And so this year we're going to be able to generate the money to have a operations manager, which will probably end up being my project manager and to end up with a sales manager. That way, when I'm away, I know I have two people that have the authority and the responsibility and that have proven themselves that can make decisions when I'm not around. Things will run a lot more smoothly when I'm not around. And that also, you know, one thing that uh, if you if you don't have the right people and you don't have the right communications and systems in place, people just are always going to the business center to make decisions, to get decisions, you know, which is great for them, right? Like, well, it was your decision. You know, there's no accountability. You made the decision and they don't have to think for themselves. Well, that's not, that's not a very good, you know, way to go through things. So anyway, our team is really coming along really well with that. So I would just say the biggest thing for American Landscape Structures is to be more of a team instead of just being me. And then for the consulting business that with COVID, the structures business has been so, so busy that I haven't had a chance to even have time for very many clients before with the, uh, with the consulting business. So now I'm looking at opening up some capacity and, uh, and bringing on board some new, like more formalized tools to help maybe 10, 12 uh, businesses this, uh, this year. Awesome. So you're open, you're freeing your time up with one business so that you can spend more time on your new venture. Yeah. So helping business owners, is really my deep, my dream business. So the the structures business is like very successful financially, but it's still not my dream business. It's fun to put structures in people's backyards. And, you know, I can get a little excited about, you know, I'm helping people spend more time together. I mean, I'm more excited about what we're doing for our own employees, honestly. But in terms of a vision for what I'm doing, like moving the needle on the business failure rate, like that is something to get excited about. I don't know anybody else out there doing what I have in mind to do that in terms of creating a a really super efficient and effective diagnostic for people that's a very reasonable and very, very high value. So that is uh, something that I'm really, really excited about being able to do for more people. Well, Jim, it has been a delight talking with you, catching up. How can everyone stay in contact with you? Yeah, so they could just check out jimadams.com. There will be a link there on that main page. You can check out some of my content. You can, um, you know, you can book an introductory call with me, or you can jump right in and fill out an application for a diagnostic. And so those are a couple of the opportunities there. We're in the process of putting together a test. It's called, are you a gunslinger, a mechanic, or a goalie, or a unicorn type business owner? So that uh, may or may not be there when you visit there, but that is uh, coming very, very soon. That is awesome. We'll be watching for that. And I'll be sure to share that once it's available. Well, thanks, Gail. I really, really appreciate it. Wish you the best. And uh, I hope to, uh, to see you again soon. Yeah, me too. Thanks so much, Jim. Well, thanks for being here with me today. I just love to hear that what keeps Jim going during the tough times of running his business. Because running any business, there's going to be tough times. But what gets him through those tough times is his team. He's developing a work culture to build in freedom, not only for himself, but for his team so that they don't miss out on important family events. I think that is so special. What fuels his work fun experience is his team. And I love that. I can certainly relate. My team certainly makes my work so fun. So let's continue this conversation. Hop over to Facebook and post what your biggest takeaway on today's show was in the Live Full and Work Fun Facebook group. Just scroll down just a little bit. You'll get the link, super fast link to get to the to the Facebook group. 
But then also you'll also see Jim's contact information. Stay connected with him too. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the episode. And I'd love for you to do me this tiny favor. If you found this episode helpful and you know somebody that could benefit from listening to it, share the link. Just text it to them. I'd certainly appreciate it. Well, thanks again for listening. And until next time, have a fantastic week. Live full and work fun.